Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Hi, I'm A.J. Hogue, author of Effortless English. Learn to speak English like a native. I train you. I teach you. Speak English fluently. You speak English powerfully. You speak English confidently. You will speak English effortlessly. When you commit to my VIP program, you must commit. Don't quit. When you commit, you join and commit to my VIP program, my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go to that website. Commit to my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. You will succeed. I promise you, you will. EffortlessEnglishClub.com. All right, I am live today on YouTube. Let me adjust my camera one second. There we go. All right. Live on YouTube at a different time than usual. It is actually... Well, it's about noon time in Japan. So I'm trying a different time. What I'm going to do is I'll try to do some shows at this time, which is uh, an early time for me in Asia. It's more it's morning or noon. I know it's a bad time for some people. Like it's a bad time in Brazil right now. It's a bad time in Europe. But this will give some people a better chance. And I will try to do some shows at the usual time, which is night in Japan, which I know is a, also a good time in Europe and in Brazil. So we'll give some, maybe some new people a chance to join live, which is nice. Again, let me adjust the camera. My camera's a little. There we go. Okay. So anyway, welcome and probably have some new folks today. Welcome live. Today, we're going to talk about mentoring, mentoring, which is it's really a very, very old system of education. It used to be called the Master Apprentice System. I have talked about it in the past at different times. I want to talk about it again because recently my sister and my niece visited. My niece is in eighth grade. And I had a very nice visit with them both. And especially with my niece, I got to spend you know, a good long time, like a full week with my niece. It's the first time I have spent a long time together with her and the first time sharing, you know, new experiences with her because she had never been in a different country before. She visited me in Japan. So we, I got to show her, show them around Japan and talked about, you know, this, the, the culture. It was very great. It was really great. Um, very great. It's not exactly good English, but anyway, <laughs> um, it was a it was a great experience, and it showed me again. It kind of reminded me of the importance the importance of different generations connecting with each other. All right, so we're going to talk about all of that in a minute. Right now, I quickly just want to say uh, hi to those of you who are joining live because I know there might be some new folks, and of course some. Phuc Din, uh, there's some familiar faces in Vietnam. So it's a good time in Asia, I know, for all of you. Vietnam, Jakarta, so that's nice. Uzbekistan, very good. Costa Rica, oh, good. Thailand, oh, we do have some Brazilians, some people staying up late in Brazil. <laughs> Gustavo, good to see you. Nice to see you, Rana, nice to see you. Yeah, it's 1 a.m. here in Brazil. I knew it was kind of late. I'll... I'll I'll do other shows at different times so that some of you can have a good time. So VJ in India, I guess it's morning in India, right? Good morning from Turkey, kind of early morning, I'm guessing, in Turkey. So, All right, so I'll get to your questions in a minute. Let me talk. I'm going to talk about the topic now, and uh, then we'll go back to oh, Mexico. Yeah, I guess it's a pretty good time in at least west coast of North America. All right, guys, so let's talk about this, the topic, and then I'll come back and uh, we'll, I'll do your comments and questions. So mentoring, I was traveling around with my niece, and I realized, you know, this one of the worst things about the school system we have everywhere. Something very, very, very unnatural in our school systems now around the world is that we put 
kids, young people, in together in a class with everybody the exact same age, right? The idea is that everybody the same age should have the same ability mentally. Of course, that's not true because in any class, uh, any age group, you know, some people are ahead in some areas and some are behind in some areas. It's totally natural that children and young people, even adults, you know, we have different strong points and weak points. So let's say you have a eighth grade kids. They're all 13, about 13 years old. Well, it's natural. Some of them might be uh, maybe kind of advanced in math. And some will be maybe advanced in language, in their language ability, writing and reading. Others might be more advanced physically, right? Like in sports and uh, things like that. Uh, some will be more advanced socially and emotionally, okay? And the truth is also some will be a little slower in those areas, right? So some kids may be very advanced in math, but they're slower and they're a little less developed in, you know, socially or physically, it's totally natural. It's not all even. We're not computers. We're not robots. It's not like a factory, right? So you know from your own life, even now, you have strong points, weak points. And some things you do better, some things worse. Some things you need to work harder, some things less hard. So it's totally natural. So by putting everybody in the same age, you know, it's, it's this idea. It's actually quite, it's not correct because everybody who's 13 is not the same. The other problem is that what's very, very, very unnatural is that in human society, in human families, right? And we know in families, of course, but in our society, we have people of all ages. You have to connect with people. You have to communicate with people, work with people, understand people, have relationships with people of all different ages. In a family, you have, of course, mom and dad, you know, parents are, you know, of one generation. And then you have children and, you know, children of different ages. You have the older children, middle, and right? They're not all the same age unless you have twins like me. <laughs> um, and, of course, you have grandparents and uncles and aunts. And in a, in a healthy family, in traditional families, big extended families, it was totally normal that that a child or a young person you know had these connections with all different ages right with their parents and uncles and aunts that generation with their grandparents and that generation with other with their cousins they might have many older cousins that were four five eight ten years older than them or more like i have cousins that are um like 20 years younger than i am i'm kind of the old cousin <laughs> and so I'm I'm really more like an uncle for them. And then, of course, as you got older, it was normal to have maybe cousins who were younger than you. And, of course, the same with brothers and sisters. And all of this was ve is, is very healthy and very natural because we it's important for us to have older people, you know, that we can follow, that will mentor us, right, that will guide us and teach us. Sometimes they directly teach us and give us advice. Sometimes we just watch them, right? They don't directly teach us, but their example, just by watching them and listening to them, we learn and maybe we get inspired. That's also a kind of leadership or mentoring. Mentoring is just meaning to, uh, to teach someone, usually someone younger or less experienced. But the other, the opposite is also important. It's also important in life to be in the position of being a mentor, of being someone who's older, because it gives you a feeling of, of, of being important. It gives you a feeling of, of helping and contributing to others, right? That you have something to give, that you have something, uh, you know, in your personality, in your life, that you're important and you can help those who are younger than you or less experienced. Even children need this, right? Even a child who is 10 years old, if they're 10 or 8, but if they have younger brothers and sisters or younger cousins, 
or even just other younger children in the neighborhood, in the family, well, then those young children will look up to them, right? Even that 10-year-old can be a kind of mentor, a kind of leader, where they are, you know, helping to take care of, helping to teach the children who are younger than them. And this gives them a feeling of responsibility and uh, a feeling of importance. I see this. I have a nephew in Japan. He's only, what, he's, he's eight. But he has a little cousin who's three. And uh, his little cousin, the three-year-old, this girl, she loves him so much. Oh, she loves him. She follows him everywhere. And he's like her hero, right? He's only five years older, but five years is big, a big amount for small children. And so, you know, it's interesting because I, I re he's starting to realize this little girl looks, to, looks up to him. This little girl sees him as the big hero. And it kind of gives him a different feeling you know it's really good for him i think it's a very positive feeling that he, he feels like oh he's only eight but he's kind of like the big brother he's kind of the, the 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 leader and he can kind of the protector you know and and show her things and he's starting to like that role and that's good because in life we have uh it's very normal in all our life that in some things we need to we need to be learning all the time and looking to the people above us who are older and wiser, more experienced, getting advice from them, getting help from them. And then also in life, we also have to do the same for others so that those who are younger, those who are less experienced, that we help them, that we guide them, that we give them advice, that we give them leadership, that we get, inspire them, help them to feel stronger and better about themselves. So... We're always learning and always kind of under, right? And and benefiting from others above us who are older. And we're also always teaching. So we're always students. We're always learning. And we're always leading and always teaching. We're in both roles at the same time, always. Ideally, ideally, right? This is the best situation in life because it's 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 the most natural it creates the strongest families it creates the strongest societies and groups and this is why i don't like this system of schools where they separate everybody right like a factory and it's just everybody's the same exact age and the you think about it in school you know if you're in 8th grade you're 13 you don't you have like no connection to anybody older than you really right you're not you have no connection to 16-year-olds or 18-year-olds. And you have no connection to younger kids, you know, 8-year-olds, 5-year-olds, right? They're, everybody's kept separate. And unfortunately, in our world now, I feel this has happened a lot with, we have what they call a generation gap, right? Generation gap. This means that younger and older generations like don't understand each other. They don't connect. They don't have a good relationship. Often this happens with parents and teenagers. Teenagers, you know, they're 15, 16, 17, 13, that they can't communicate with their parents. Parents can't communicate with them. This is a bad situation. It's very, very bad. And I think that part of it is this separation from school where they're, the kids are teenagers. They're only around other teenagers all day. And they have one teacher who's older, but usually, you know, often they don't respect the teacher. And so they kind of lose the respect. They lose the connection with the kids. I mean, with their parents. The kids lose the connection with parents. But also, it's not just parents. It's uncles and aunts and grandparents. And that's so important. So I saw this again with my niece that, you know, that first of all, she had a good relationship with her mom, my sister. But also, it was very nice to have that connection to talk to her and talk about life. And we were talking about her future and, you know, her thinking about going to high school next year. And, you know, that I could be in that position to be kind of an uncle, a little bit of a mentor. She's starting to learn Spanish. She just started Spanish class in middle school. So we talked about, you know, learning Spanish. And I, I gave her some advice about different apps and different lessons she could try uh, because she said her classes, her Spanish class is not very good. No surprise. <laughs> so, I, I, so I just told her, I said, you know, you're not going to learn Spanish in class, in school, but you can learn it if you do it yourself. So anyway, it was very nice. And I got to be in that position a little bit as a mentor. 
So I, so I guess I have a, a double message. For those of us who are older, and, and you're always older than somebody, right? <laughs> even if you're 15, even if you're 18, well, you're older than 10-year-olds. So you can still be a mentor to those who are younger than you, right? And so for those of us who are older, it's so important for us to make an effort, to make a real effort to help and connect with people who are younger. They need it. They need us. They need that guidance. So many young people are kind of lost, kind of lost. Like they don't know, especially about big questions like, what do I do with my life? How do I find meaning? How do I find purpose? What should, what should I study? What should I do, do as a job? How can I have a happy life? You know, all of these things. And of course, parents should need to do this. Of course, parents have to talk and connect with and mentor, take care of their kids, but also uncles and aunts and also just older friends. And just it's important for us to do this, to make an effort, because sometimes I think older people are nervous about doing this. We're worried the younger person doesn't want to hear us. And, you know, that's true. It is true if if we do it the wrong way. So as an older person, you do not don't just tell young people what to do. Don't just lecture them. Do this, do this, do this. They don't want to hear that. Okay? Cuz it's not respecting them. What you can do as an older person, the best thing you can do first is to listen to them. Like the, we always have to start with understanding. Remember our book club, uh, 7 habits of highly effective people. First you have to understand before you give advice before you mentor, before you help, first you must listen, 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 and understand. So the best thing you can do as an older person or more experienced with a young person is just to listen to them, ask them questions about, you know, what are they worried about? What do they want in their life? What are they confused about? What do they need help with? And just listen, mostly listen, ask questions and listen. Don't give advice in the beginning. Don't give advice. Don't just tell them what to do. Unfortunately, they, they're used to teachers telling them what to do all the time and some parents just constantly telling them what to do. So they're kind of tired of older people telling them what to do all the time. So the best thing you can do is listen. I tried to do this with my niece. Just, just listen you know, to, to her ideas, her concerns, and ask her questions about it. So that's the very first thing we can and should do as older people is listening, listening, listening to young people, trying to understand them. And then when they then when they ask, when they ask for advice, when they ask for your opinion, then you can tell them, but not before. Let them ask. Let them ask you. Let them request. Okay? So that's the important thing. I think that's the major mistake older people make. And I do it sometimes too. We all do it sometimes. But our big mistake as older people is that we try to talk and talk down, right? Tell them, do this, do this, that's stupid, don't do that, blah, 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 talking, talking too much. And what we need to do as older people or more experienced people, we need to listen more to young people. We've got to listen to them and understand them first so they feel understood. Then they will ask us, okay? Then they will. Eventually, they will ask us for advice. They will ask our opinion. Okay, but we need to wait. Wait until they ask. Until then, listen, 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 and ask them questions. Understand them. That's what they need most of all is for some older people to listen to them and understand them. That's what they want most, I think, in, uh, at first. And then they will want your opinion. Now, on the other side, younger people. And we're all younger too, right? I'm 51, but... I'm younger than people who are 70, okay? There are people still older than me, 70s, 80s, 90s. I have two grandmothers that are in their 90s. So we always are in this position, and maybe until we're very old, but most of our life, we will always have people above us. And in this position, it's also good for us in life to listen and to talk to older people. Don't ignore them. Sometimes, again, we don't, maybe we like, ah, they don't understand the modern world. They don't understand uh, technology. They don't understand like what's new. That might be true. Sometimes that's true. 
but they do understand other things. They understand big questions in life, right? Like how, how to be happy, uh, big mistakes to avoid in life, um, the deeper, bigger questions in life. So yeah, don't ask someone who's 70 or 80. Maybe don't ask them advice about internet marketing. They might not understand that or, or cool apps, okay? But they do understand about life. You can talk to them about how do you find like a good husband or wife? How do you create a strong family? How can, you know, what's most important in life? How do I have great, find greater happiness? What should I do about, you know, making money? And, um, you know, I'm, or what should I do about, you know, traveling? What should I do about school? What should I do about, you know, these bigger questions in life? You don't have to agree with them. You won't agree with them always. But it's good to listen to them because they do have a lot more life experience. And, of course, just if someone's old does not mean automatically they're wise. There are a lot of old fools. We know this. A lot of old fools. There are a lot of young fools, too. <laughs> okay? But when you can find older people who do have a little wisdom, they're, they're a little bit deep, they've had a lot of life experience, they're like gold, okay? Spend some time with them. Talk to them about their life. Ask them about their life and their life history. And, you know, get their opinion about different things in life. You don't need to agree. It doesn't matter about agreeing. You can just learn something from them, even if you disagree sometimes. You don't need to agree about their advice, but you can learn from their life and their experiences, yeah, even from their mistakes. Many times with older people, They'll tell you about their life. They'll tell you about mistakes they made. And that's great because you can think to yourself, avoid that mistake. You can avoid some bad mistakes when you learn from older people. <laughs> okay, Let, it, That's a big thing in life. If you can avoid some big mistakes, it will help you a lot in life. So by talking to older people, you can kind of learn. Right? Like a lot of older people, for example, they might tell you, don't focus too much on money. Don't focus too much. I focused too much on working. I worked too much. I was too focused on money when I was young. And so I spent, I didn't spend enough time with my children. And oh, it was a big mistake. Well, you can listen to that and you learn from that. And you realize, okay, I'm going to avoid that mistake myself. Right? Also, specifically, specifically in your job or your career, this, in this area especially, you can learn so much from people above you, okay? Like if you're a young person, you're 20-something, you're starting a new job, you want to make more money, you want better jobs, you want a better career, what should you do? Well, talk to people who are above you, your bosses, supervisors, people making more money than you are. What should you do? Don't bother them, but just... You know, ask them questions and listen sometimes. Just say, oh, I'm just starting this career. I don't really know what I'm doing. You know, what advice would you give me? What should, how can I improve? How can I make more money? How can I get better positions? And let them guide you. Take them to lunch sometime. You pay. You pay. I know it's hard when you're young and you don't have much money, but you pay. Take someone above you to lunch. Take your boss to lunch. Take other people in your company you pay for lunch and just say, oh, I'd love to go to lunch with you and just, you know, chat with you about your career a little bit. I'm very curious. I'm just starting mine and I'd love to hear about your experiences and your advice. Most older people will be happy to do this, okay? Some won't, okay, whatever, but most will, okay? And in this way, you can get great advice. The other thing is that when you do this, this older person, many times they will if you're respectful like this to them, they will want to help you. It will create inside them a desire to help you because you've asked, because it's a compliment. You're complimenting them. When you ask someone above you, older than you, when you ask them for advice, when you ask them about their experience, you're complimenting them. You're telling them, I respect you. You're showing them, not just telling them, you're showing them you respect them. And because of that, many times they will become interested in you. And they will, not just one time, but for a while, they'll want to help you. And that's great. It's a very good way to help your career in this way. 
So you can see in both directions, this mentoring, we used to have a more formal system. It was called the master apprentice system. And they used to have this around the world. Now we don't, but you have to kind of create it yourself. And this is how you do it. This is how you do it. So as older people, make an effort. You know, you can take a younger person to lunch, but listen, don't just talk to them, listen. And as a younger person, you know, take older people to lunch and ask them questions and learn from them too. And in this way, we create these stronger connections between different ages, different generations. It's good for all of us. It's good for us as a whole society or in a company or in a family. And individually, it's good for all of us too. All righty then. Let's go to our live comments and questions. Okay, Farouk says, this is a very important topic. We all need good teachers and mentors during our life. The internet, internet gives us more option nowadays. That's a good point. We can find online mentors. I can consider you as a mentor for me. Absolutely, Farouk, and thank you. And you're correct. I did this myself. You know, I uh, in business, for example, when I was starting in business and starting my own business, I did not have anyone you know, in my town, in my neighborhood, in my family. So I, I did exactly what Farouk is suggesting. I, I used books and online um, videos and people as my mentors, kind of my, you know, uh, digital mentors. <laughs> uh, but, and it, it worked, though. It helped me. I learned a lot by doing this, by watching videos of the same person, by reading books from the same person. I could learn a lot from them. So it's a good point. You can also do this in some areas of life. This will be very helpful. Good morning from the Soviet Union. Does the Soviet Union still exist? <laughs> Dudu says, Brazil rules the chat today. We are the most passionate English learners. Nice. You guys are, you guys are late night people too, I guess. Henner, thank you. Henner Gonzaga. <clears throat> Sally's asking about my baby twins. Are they identical? They're not. It's a boy and a girl. Not identical. Yeah, like this is a nice idiom to express. Romaldo Rocha says, we have two ears and just one mouth. Right. Which gives us the idea of the importance of listening. And it's true. It's, it's it's just so important to listen. And it goes back again to our book club, that seven habits. Talking's fine, of course, but it's just that the first step in building these relationships, I think, especially when you're older, but well, when you're younger, too, anytime that you want to listen first. Listen and understand the person. When you're young, don't tell older people what to do. Okay, big mistake. <laughs> don't do it because often you're giving them bad advice. And when you're old, though, see, this is, is more dangerous. I think it's older people. We older people, we're the ones who often think we need to talk to the younger people. Right? Tell them what to do. Oh, those foolish young people, they need my advice, right? And maybe they do need the advice, and maybe you have good information. But try to remember when you were young, uh, nobody wants to hear someone telling them what to do a lot, right? Nobody wants that, especially someone older, right? And, you know, just try to remember when you're young, it feels like everybody older is constantly trying to tell you what to do, right? Sometimes your parents, they're constantly, do this, do this, do this, don't do that. And then teachers, do this, do this, do this, do this, right? So young people get tired of older people telling them what to do all the time. It's kind of disrespectful. It's disrespecting them, right? They, they also have valuable beliefs and ideas and experiences and dreams. And they want older people to listen to them too, okay? It's not that they don't, it's not that they, they disrespect you. 
as an older person. They don't disrespect us. It's not that they hate us or something. It's not that there's something wrong with them. It's just they're tired of people telling them what to do all the time. I understand that. I was the same when I was younger. I got really tired of it, right? So it's just as older people, we have to remember this. And I think we can we can be so helpful to younger people by making an effort to listen first, to really try to listen to them and understand them first. And if they ask, then we can give our advice and tell, talk about our experience. That's good. When they ask, when they ask. But otherwise, you know, I think we don't realize how, how, how important this can be. Like it really, if you're a young person and you have some, an older person who's more experienced and they really just listen to you and try to understand you, you know, that really makes you feel important when you're young. It really gives you a feeling of confidence and uh, it's really special. You know, I can think of a few times in my life when I was young, that happened, and it, uh, I valued that a lot. It, very, it, it was a great experience, right? It make, means a lot. So let's all remember, when, those of us who are older, to do that. And, by, and that's also true, even if you're a teenager, if you're 16, okay? If you're 15, and you have a younger brother, he's 12, don't just tell him what to do and boss him around. Listen to him, too. Right? You can do this even if you're young. If you're 12 years old, you can do this with your little brother or sister or cousins. Right? Same. We can all practice this with younger people. Okay, Adderley says, I have three mentors, one for each important part of my life. That's a good idea, by the way. Jeff Cavalier for body, you, thank you, for mind, and Shri for spirit. Wonderful. Exactly. And this is also true. And Adderley really kind of uh, shows us a good point that we can have mentors in these different areas of life. Right? Like one person cannot be an expert in everything. Okay? So one person probably will not mentor you in every area of life. Right? So you might have in business or money or job, you might have one or two people. But in, in like relationships and family, probably someone different. And in like spiritually, a spiritual teacher or guide, you know, a priest, an imam, a guru, a monk, a, a nun, something like that, right? It, for your spiritual life, for your mental life, you know, all of these things you can have in all these different areas. And that's a very good idea. Marianne, good to see you. Marianne, uh, our modern world today lost connections because relationships between young and elder become quite bad, right? Young thinks that the older people know nothing and some older have criticism, also vice versa. Yeah, that's right. And we see this, it's encouraged in the media. If you watch movies and TV, if you watch carefully, you'll notice in a lot of these movies and TV shows, they show young people being very disrespectful to the older ones they often show the older people being looking foolish and stupid or they show the older people being like kind of lecturing and yelling at the younger people it's, these are all bad examples um so that's exactly right we have to do this and yeah you know i think young people they think they're too focused on um like just new stuff Okay, yeah, some older people, maybe they don't know the cool new music or movies or technology. So what? Those things are not so important in life. They, the, they're the big important things in life are family and work and meaning and, you know, all of these things. So it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> it doesn't matter. We all have to work, younger and older. Because re And remember, we're always older and we're always younger. We're always in both positions until maybe we're 90. <laughs> then we're just older. But most of us, it's, uh, you know, we're in both positions. Yeah, like DeLong says, be a student today, become a, a teacher tomorrow. That's everybody's way. That's right. First, we have to be humble and be students in, in any area of life, you know, in business, in uh, language, in anything. 
and then once we become good enough, then we can become teachers and we can help those who are trying to learn. And it's a good feeling to fight and, and struggle and work hard and learn something and become good and then to give it to and help someone else. That's a really nice feeling. Dalal, hey, good Dalal, good to see you. Showing our own kids or young adults by being good examples, not just lecturing them. This is another good point. Yes, as older people, we can be great leaders by example, right? Instead of talking, we show, we do. That's the strongest, of course, you're right. Oh, well, here's a nice, Eva's got a nice, Eva, good to see you too. Have you ever listened to Meg Miker from Parenting Great Kids? She said, talking about charter when they're speaking to children. Uh, I'll check. Uh, I have not listened to her. Uh, it's a woman, I guess, a her, but I'll check her out. Meg Miker. Soy Le Crux says, thank God I had the opportunity to know your teachings. Thank you very much. That's very nice. Thank you. Oh, this is an insane innocence as um, lots of love to you and your family from Vietnam. I have a story. An older girl tried to give me some advice, told me I needed more school education. I chose my own path. Yeah, so see, this is called, so the phrase in English is unsolicited advice. Unsolicited advice. Unsolicited. Solicited means asked for. You ask for something. So unsolicited means you didn't ask for it. And has the idea you don't want it. So nobody, almost nobody, <laughs> likes unsolicited advice, right? We don't like someone just to tell us what to do. Even if it's good advice, in this case it was bad advice, but um, we don't like it, right? Nobody likes it. <laughs> so that's why it's not a good idea to just tell people what to do. If they ask you, it's different. If they ask you, it is solicited advice, right? They are soliciting. They are asking for the advice. It's very different. But if they don't ask you, most of us don't want to hear it, right? We don't want someone just telling us what to do all the time. And the other point is that, like, of course, as I said, you will not always agree with the advice people give you, even if you ask. Sometimes you'll disagree. That's fine. You don't need to agree all the time, okay? It's just about trying to learn in general from older people. And sometimes you learn by disagreeing. Sometimes you learn from their mistakes. I have learned a lot from older people from doing, you know, doing, I do the opposite what they did. I see what they did and they got bad results. They made mistakes. So I say, ah, I'm not doing that. I'll do different. I'll do something the opposite. And so you can also learn that way. You can learn from older people or other people's mistakes or foolish ideas. You see they get a bad result. You see they are unhappy. So you do something different. That's another way of learning. From Colombia, Diego. Greetings from, let's see, Nieva, Huela, Huela, Colombia. Grateful with you to share with us your life path experiences. Hundreds of hugs. Thank you, Diego. Very nice. Paredes. <laughs> I'm hearing a baby crying. Not crying, they're playing right now. Yeah, like like Henner says, exactly. Uh, better than learning from one's mistakes is learning from others' mistakes. That's the key. Yeah, far better. <laughs> they get the pain and you get the learning. So it's certainly better to learn from others' mistakes. I mean, we will make our own mistakes. Of course we will. But it's nice when you can get it from others. Let let them uh, experience the pain and <laughs> you avoid it. Uh, Marion, again, I love the legend of S hero Santiago from the book The Alchemist. How he used the support of, yes, that's right. He used the support of elderly, of older people, to build his self-confidence. He got help from real elders in any area of his life that seemed hard. Good point. That's right. In that book, we saw Santiago, the hero, again and again, getting 
having mentors in different parts of that story. He had different mentors who helped him and guided him and taught him. And he was, uh, he was smart because he looked for those mentors and found them. So it's really great. Yeah, like, okay, Eva, again, like, pointing out how unsolicited advice is so bad. Even great advice would not be heeded when it's uh, spoken in a bossy way. Right. My, grand my grandpa is a really wise man, but the way he does it is very annoying. It's like being in school. Right. See, this is my point. So Eva re even realizes, even knows that... Uh, Grandpa is wise and has good advice, but because Grandpa's doing it in a way that's very bossy, like do this, do this, do this, right? Just uh, automatically you want to go against it. It's just, it's human nature. We don't like it, <laughs> right? So to be better mentors, we have to listen and communicate in a better way. Mentor means advising. Yes, Bufendra, that's correct. Kind of like advisor, an advisor. Ah, so Soy uh, Lokrux is in Nicaragua. Bless, uh, thank you. You're a blessing for many people. Thank you so much again. For me, your message is empower. English changed my life. Thank you forever. Greetings from Nicaragua, Central America. Greetings to you too. Thank you. That's very nice. We do have a lot of Brazilians today. Now, Sally uh, Nieto says, sometimes young people are more mature than some adults. This is exactly true. It, you know, really, it's not really age. It's not really so much age, like the number, your, your years. It's really experience. It's experience and wisdom, right? And some young people, let's say someone is 25, but if they have a huge amount of life experience... And they have had a lot of problems and challenges and difficulties in their life already. And they overcame them and they had to fight and learn. And well, that young person who's 25 might be already quite experienced and quite wise because of all those difficulties and challenges. And they gain a lot of wisdom. You know, and on the other hand, you might have somebody who's 70, but they've been spoiled their whole life. They're not very wise. They never really learned much. And they might be very foolish. So yes, of course, this is true individually. It's just generally, generally speaking, we get more experience as we get older, as we live longer, right? So in general, it's generational, different ages. But there are individual exceptions, as Sally Nieto is saying. I think we all know this. Good point. Ah, yeah. So Fearless Profender asking about my visit. So my sister, yes. So they went home. They, they were here for one week. That's why I was gone for a week from the podcast, the show. Uh, my sister and her daughter, my niece, were here for one week. I was a tour guide for one week. We went to Kyoto, Nara, Osaka, Osaka Castle. I showed them around Japan. They met my wife's family here. It was really fun. It was a great time. And now they are back in America. They returned home. Okay, let's go some more. Ah, so Nagam says, uh, how can I deal with my headmaster who is having a very different kind of perspective from me? I'm a teacher. This can be challenging, you know. It, it, it can be challenging. Um, if you want to stay at the job, perhaps, you know, it's hard, right? I don't know if the person, if the person is, they have a different perspective, but if they're a good person, they're generally like open-minded and a good person, then you have a chance. Then you can maybe find some understanding. If they're not a good person, if they're just kind of, you know, you know, a bad boss, then maybe not no chance. But if they're if they're a good person, I would say go to lunch with them and again, try to understand them first. Say, look, you could even say, I'd like to have lunch with you and just talk to you about some things. And at the lunch, 
don't talk so much, but more listen and say, you know, I feel like, you know, we, you and I, we have kind of a lot of differences of opinion. I'd like to understand your side more. You know, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? Why? Why do you think this? Why is this important? And, you know, again, read that book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Read the book because if you do this, you make a big effort and really, 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 really understand your boss very well. Then your boss might become more open to listening to you because now your boss feels like you are respecting them. Your boss feels like you understand them. So now your boss might want to understand you more. And then you have a chance to talk about your perspective and why you have your ideas. But first you have to do it for their side. This is, uh, it's more, it's just more effective, okay? This works better. It's more persuasive. I've done it and it does work. So get that, I recommend Nagam, get that book and read it. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. You can read it in your language or in English or both. Well, the comments stopped working for a minute. Sorry, guys. Sometimes YouTube. Yeah, like so Henry gives another example of a mentor just like that you can find sometimes, you know, from a book or from a video. Here in Brazil, I learned a lot from a historian and teacher, Leandro Carnal, who teaches us facts of life in an optimistic and wise view. Perfect. See, that's great. Exactly. And I do this all the time. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Okay, it seems like the comments are starting to work again. Cici Johnson joining live for the first time. First time I watched your live stream. I remember 10 years ago, I first got here in the States. My speaking was terrible. I decided to research how to speak faster and easier, and I found your website. Well, that's a good story. Thank you. You guys can hear the, hear their voices a little bit, huh? They're Delal says, your children's voices are cute. They are cute. They're so cute. They doing okay in there? Yeah. All right. They're playing. Oh, this is interesting. Iba says, I would like to, I'd be interested to listen about different, the difference between American and Japanese traditional parenting, like stories about two cities podcast. That would be interesting. You know, it's it's a little challenging, this question. Be, like, I'll just talk about the American side that I know, of course. Because um, America has lost, mostly lost its tradition. So this is the sad thing. So I can talk about traditional American parenting, but that's not modern parenting, right? It's not the generation now. Like traditional American parenting would be my parents, my grandparents, and... It was you know, quite nice, I think. But unfortunately, so much of the good parenting traditions are lost now in America. Like American, the American family has been destroyed mostly from divorce and other things. And so now it's quite a sad situation. So I, I think, yes, I would be happy to talk about this, but I would talk about the old way because the new way is terrible. The new way is, yeah, the new families in America it's, are really terrible now, mostly. Of course, some exceptions. You know, my sister's pretty good, but, but there are exceptions. Um, but mostly it's terrible. And then traditional Japanese parenting, I'll, I could ask my wife about that. Good idea. But it's kind of, it would be interesting, though, any kind of comparison of the two cultures, right? Not sure what this is a comment about. Uh, let's see. Hello, thanks. Okay, let's see. Good to see all of you. Yes, thank you for saying hi. I'm not sure what this is a comment about. Kamiska Tatiana says, 
It's no way to stop working. In winter, you'll be frozen in Russia. We don't have bananas on trees. <laughs> Got to work hard in those northern climates. Greetings from Mexico, says Marisco. Nice. Thank you. Ah, so Kid Magician notices in the video your room is lighter than normal. It's because it's daytime. Usually I do the show. It's night here. Now it's day and I've got a big window behind me uh, to my right. So, yes, it's much lighter. That's why. It's daytime. How do you call your children? Like what nicknames do you call your children? Uh, cutie, sweetie. In Japanese, they have um, uh, like little kind of a word that you add to the end of a name that makes it sound more cute. Chan and kun, right? So you can say, you know, like Taro-chan, Taro-kun, Taro-kun. That's for a boy, Taro. So Taro could be the name, Taro. But if you add kun, it's kind of more cute. It's a little bit, a little bit like in Spanish, Ito or Ita, right? So you could have Carlos, a boy's name, but you maybe say Carlito. Carlito makes it a little more cute, like a little more, you know, affection, right? So it's kind of like that. So I, I do that too. Vladislav, good to see you. I wasn't sure if you could join because of a different time. I've heard most Americans give their kids to kindergartens when they are only three months old because parents have to work. This is what I'm talking about, where it's kind of a sad situation now, where it does happen. I don't know the percentage. You know, not all do. My sister doesn't do that. But um, but there is a large percent, exactly, that at very, very, very young ages, they give away the children to a daycare or something. You know, there are, you know, the divorce rate is terrible. Um, it's just a lot of really, the, the family is has been mostly destroyed in America. Of course, there are exceptions, of course. But just in terms of general numbers, it's a very sad situation all around. I find that I know that these kind of problems happen in other countries, too, outside of America. But I just traveling, I feel America is probably the worst. I feel like in m most other countries I have visited, families are stronger. Adrian Oviedo, greetings from Ecuador. You are our best mentor. Living here because of our current crisis. Oh, from Venezuela. Uh, VIP and podcast, part of this new life, new challenge. Good luck to you in Ecuador. Hopefully, Venezuela will come back strong. Good for you, insane innocent again says, you taught me the mindset, be your own boss and be free. I'm sick of being an obedient worker. Time for trying something new and brave. Thanks a million, AJ, for all your great advice. Good luck to you, man. Just be strong, go forward, learn from your mistakes, don't give up. You'll be great. Congratulations to you. That's a, that's a strong statement. Uh, now this is a good okay from from mexico city uh maris says my guide mentor was an old boyfriend too wise to me gave me lots of unsolicited advice uh, and this is a key phrase and he followed none of them we should be separated because of that <laughs> um that's a good point okay now when people give advice it's always good to see do they follow the advice if they follow the advice and they get good results, well, the advice probably is quite good. If they don't follow the advice, then you have to kind of look more closely. Now, sometimes people give you advice because of mistakes they made. Okay, so that's still good advice, right? They, they did not do it. They did something different and they got bad results. So they're telling you advice. They, they're trying to save you. They're trying to help you not make the same mistake. Don't do what I did is what they're saying. You know, do this. They didn't do it. 
but they're giving you the different advice because of that. And that's okay, but, um, but you have to look more closely in those situations. But the key thing, the key word is unsolicited, unsolicited. Nobody likes it. It's just human nature. We don't like it. Nobody likes someone to tell them what to do if you don't ask. So that's the key thing. It's, we're happy for, when we ask, we're happy for advice. When we don't ask, we usually don't want it. Nasur, good to see you here at this time. Do you think interacting with older people, uh, people older than you, makes us grow wise? A lot of parents say better interactions with those of your own ages. I think in general it does. Yes, especially if you're. I think in general if you're younger and you're you're interacting with a lot of people who are older than you, not just one, right? Because we know one person maybe they're foolish, one person whatever. But if you have a lot of people in life that are older. Yes, it will. I think in general, it will help you be more mature and wiser. But I think also it's important to have people, you know, have friendships and connections with a lot of younger people because they also have something to give us. They have energy. They have enthusiasm. They have dreams. They have new ideas. They, they know more about usually like what's new right new technology new trends all these things and so this keeps you mentally more young if you have a lot of connections with younger people so i think we need both i think we need both with older people we get that wisdom and that helps us a lot if we have a you know a lot of older people in our life connections friendships mentors and then with younger people so we don't become boring old people, right? <laughs> the young people keep us alive. It keeps us current. So we, we know how to use a cell phone, right? We know apps. We know we, their energy, their excitement. All of that's great for us. So both are beneficial. And of course, people our own age too, right? This is what I mean, though. It's very unnatural, I think. If you look in human history, it's unnatural to focus just on people our same age. Any age, doesn't matter. Right? If you're middle-aged, you're like me, and you're 50, then it's unnatural that everybody, all your connections, all your social life is just other people who are middle-aged. It's not good for you. I don't think it's good. Right? You need people of older generations, and you need people of younger generations. I think it's helpful for all of us. It, me too. It helps me a lot. I love interacting with younger people. It keeps me young. You know, doing an internet business helps me, keeps me a little more young. And I also like older people and listening to their experiences. Oh, we got a baby crying in there. MD says, uh, hi from India. Please tell me how to make a foreign friend to talk in English. I think most people, what they do is they you do a language exchange. They're different. You just do a search online. There are different websites where you can trade languages or pay. If you have money, you can pay. Vladislav says it's in Moscow at 7 a.m., so you're up early. Ah, from Bhutan. Tamchoy Dorji says, I'm from Bhutan. My friends, Kristen and Joe, just visited your country. I saw some pictures. Amazingly beautiful. Looks amazing. Hope you recently the typhoon didn't disturb you. Did not disturb me, but caused a problem with my sister's flight. She was one day late coming to Japan. But Osaka was no problem. We, no big damage here. The damage was more north. Okay, Duke says, I'm working as a mentor coordinator. How to be a good mentor. So again, Duke wins. I, I would say that the key mistake people make is talking too much. So as a mentor and advisor is to do a lot of listening. Listen 80%. And then when they ask for advice, you can talk. But lots of listening, lots of asking questions. Again, get the book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It's really good about that. That section is really good. And see, like I, I didn't, another good point. In my life, I come across people who try to give advice to me 
but they haven't got any success in their life. <laughs> when I see it, I get really angry. I'm from Azerbaijan. Right. This is a good point. So if you're, especially in specific areas of life, get advice from people who are good in that area. So if you want business advice, you want advice from someone who's successful already, right? I mean, in your career, right? Someone who's above you, who's making more money, who has a better job, get advice from them. Uh, if you're starting a business yourself, then a more successful business person, right? Exactly, good point. If you want health advice, Get advice from someone who's healthier than you are, <laughs> right? If you're trying to lose weight, if you're fat, well, get advice from thin people. You don't want advice from other fat people. They they don't know, obviously. They don't know how to do it. So you want advice from thin people. Or from, and maybe even the best advice is from thin people who used to be fat, right? Unsolicited advice, a good collocation. Yes, it is a good one. Thank you, Tatiana. Diego, well, you answered your own question. Diego Ferre uh, Ferreira says, uh, how can I be motivated? I get tired learning English. I use your videos they're because they're energetic. I feel motivated. Regards, use my videos. This is the key, Diego, and it, I have the same problem, uh, is that especially at your level where you're more, you're getting higher levels, like high intermediate, advanced. The key thing is finding things that are interesting because we get bored, right? So this, to stay motivated is things that are energetic, things that are interesting to you. So you like my show, my podcast, definitely use it. Use it, use it, use it. Uh, for reading, try to find books and texts. My baby's going crazy. <laughs> try to find books and texts that are really interesting to you. This is the challenge. I have the same. Ch I'm already having this challenge with Japanese, where I'm getting a little bored with some, some stuff, and I'm trying to find things I like. And I, I found a few things like an anime I like. So that's the key. Oh, this would be a kind of a good idea. I could maybe do a, v a video about this. Let's talk about some economic abbreviations uh, in Shark Tank. I could maybe, you know, at, we're doing our movie club is Jerry Maguire. We'll start again next week. Not today, but next week. We'll go. We're, next weekend, we start again. Book club and movie club. But after Jerry Maguire, maybe I could do Shark Tank, the TV show. It's about business and entrepreneurs. That's a good idea. I could do that like a movie technique, one or two episodes. There's a lot of talking, a lot of vocab about money and business. Good suggestion, Kid Magician. I like it. Well, I think that's a, we'll do that next. I, I think we'll do it. Okay, now see, Delange Cayo's kind of advice, this is where, this is the kind of advice of someone who makes a mistake. Um, someone who smokes almost every day advises me not to do it because it's not good for health. Can I consider such a friend as a mentor? Maybe not a mentor, but it's good advice. Why are they telling you? Because they made a mistake. They're addicted now, so they're having a very hard time to quit. But they, so they know the danger. They know that smoking is dangerous for this reason because it's hard to stop after you start. And they know it's unhealthy. And they wish, you know, inside they wish they didn't do it. They're wishing, ah, oh, I shouldn't have done it. So they're trying to save you from the same mistake. So I'd say, yes, this friend is trying to give you good advice, right? They're doing it from, with a good heart. They're saying, don't do what I did. I did something stupid. I became addicted to smoking. Don't do it. So I don't know about mentor. They're not I, not a good health mentor, probably. I wouldn't ask them for health advice in general. But in this specific area of life, smoking, I'd say they are trying to be helpful to you, right? They're, they're trying to save you from 
their own mistake. And so, and this is you get this kind of advice sometimes, and it's okay. They're not they're they're trying to do good, right? Yeah, well, like Jorge is saying, Jorge Vallejo says, parents, good teachers, and good friends want always want the best for you. This is a kind of a way to, this is a good way to judge it, right? Kind of just like the last question about smoking. Are, do they want the best for you, or is it for their ego? See, some people give advice, it's for their own ego. They're trying to just tell you what to do and makes them feel important and big. That's not good. But good teachers, good friends, good mentors, good parents. They're doing it because they love you or they care about you or they want the best for you. They want you to be happy. They want you to succeed. That's, you know, good, respectful advice. Maybe it's still bad advice. They, maybe they're telling you something that's not useful. It happens, okay? They can, everyone makes mistakes. Maybe you disagree. That's okay. But if their heart is right, that's important. You can respect that still. You can still respect bad advice if they're trying to genuinely, they really care about you. Like Henner says, Henner's lots of great comments today. I got more wisdom from the simplest people, living without haste, living the moment, the now, respecting po all points of view. Exactly. And many times it is that simple advice about life that is strongest and we need to hear it again and again we kind of know it but it's good to hear it to be reminded okay a couple more and then i'm gonna go i have babies going crazy in the next room you might hear them Oh, Vladislav about, yeah, I remember the 2011 big tsunami in Japan. A week later, singer Andre Makarovic at his concert offered to donate money to help Japan. He said, Japan is a peaceful country. It is indeed. Very nice place. Sylvia from LA, Los Angeles, California. First time to catch you here. You're the best coach in the world. Glad I found you. L.A. Always has good weather in L.A. You're jump. You guys are typing quickly. Ah, Jiggy Schiller says, Movie technique is great. I still have trouble speaking spontaneously in everyday situations. Even so, should I be patient and use the movie technique? Yes, continue to use it. And I recommend also do some shadowing. Also do some shadowing, the shadowing technique. Just, you know, Google it and research it. It'll help with that also. Come to Brazil, AJ, says Rafael. I, I do. I want to. I will. I'll get there. Okay. We have a book club suggestion. I have not read this book. Santosh says, can you please add You Are Born Rich to your by Bob Proctor for your book club? Sounds like a nice book. I'll check it out. Oh, this is interesting. Tatiana says, I highly appreciate Americans and Europeans never interfere in somebody's life, especially when they're on when you're on holidays somewhere in a hotel. I didn't know that. I never noticed that. It's interesting. We miss your walk and talk podcast while you're holding a baby. I'll do it again, Nasser. <laughs> I'll do it again. Okay, yeah, now, 
DeLong again, Kyle says, sometimes teachers show you the right way to become successful, but they are a lost person. After school, someone can become a president. However, the teacher is still a teacher. Yeah, right, exactly. You have to, you know, you have to consider this. And also some, as, uh, you know, we talked about earlier that sometimes, you know, a mentor is good in one area only. So you might have someone who's a great mentor in business, for example, but maybe their family life is terrible. Like they, they're, you know, they're, they're bad relationships with their children and all, or maybe even they're an alcoholic or some, something terrible, like their personal life is horrible. But still, somehow, they're really good at business. They're really good at making money. They're really good at their job. So it's okay. They can be your mentor, but just in that one area, right? You will listen to their advice about business and money because they are obviously good at it. But ignore any advice about other topics, <laughs> right? That's also fine. It's, and it could be the same. Like someone might be super healthy and they work out and their body's great. But they, they're terrible with money, right? They're, they never have any money. They're always losing money. They spend money badly. They have no money discipline. So again, you listen to their advice about health, but not about money. That's totally fine. I mean, nobody's perfect, right? So we can't be good at everything. Uh, Diego's asking, I understand you well. Where are you from? Where were you born? I'm from America, uh, United States, America, and born in the United States, and specifically from the southeast part of America, Georgia, the state of Georgia, not the country, the state. All right, I think we are about finished, guys. Nice long show today. I'm happy to be back. Okay, just looking through the questions very quickly, see if there's anything else. Oh, Dragon Den. Eba's mentioning Dragon Den. Dragon Den is the yeah, British or... Is it British or Canadian? I thought it was Canadian. Um, either one, but uh, I'll do Shark Tank because I'm American, and I know the I I know the peep that Shark Tank show. I know the kind of the personalities. Uh, it's it's a it's an interesting show. Shark Tank, if you don't know, Shark Tank is a show. They're like these. Uh, how many? One, two, three. I think they're four, four or five big business pe rich people, really rich guys, guys meaning women and men, and then like n people come the guests come who have a new idea for a business, right? Or maybe they already have a small business and they need money. They need an investment to grow the business. And so they come and they give a presentation, a short presentation about the business. They give a presentation to the rich people, the investors. And then the investors ask questions. Usually they're not very nice. <laughs> they're really tough, you know? That's why it's called Shark Den or Shark Tank rather. Dragon Den, Shark Tank. Same idea, that they are the sharks, the investors, the rich guys are sharks because they're really, really aggressive and tough. And so, but it's interesting because they're, they're talking about money and investing and business and you can actually learn some nice ideas from it and also some business English. So I, I like the idea of using that. Yeah, like Adrian says, exactly. The same happens with our parents. My mom is in bad health, but the best is an engineer. My dad is the best in health, ultra marathons, but not best as a professional. Right, right. We're all like this. So you would want health advice from dad and job career advice from mom in that case. Gone with the Wind, Tatiana. Yes, Gone with the Wind, Georgia. An old movie, a very famous movie. That The setting is in Georgia. Civil War, Georgia. Okay. 
<laughs> Boro says, I'm imitating your voice right now. So shadowing, right. Duitan Boro is doing shadowing of imitate, you know, listening and speaking at the same time right now with me live. Exactly. And that that's, that's, fan- don't, no need to say sorry. That's good. That's exactly what you should do. It's very good practice. And once you become a little higher level and you're kind of more intermediate, this will help you, the shadowing technique. For lower beginners, it's a bit tough to do this, okay? You're still getting used to the language, so it's shadowing is very hard for a beginner. But as you get to more intermediate levels, higher intermediate levels, the shadowing technique of listening and speaking along at the same time, imitating the speaker, can be very good. I like it. I like it. I think it's an effective thing to do. All right, guys, I'm going to go now. I think we had a nice show. This was a very good show. Uh, I'll be back. I'll do my. I'll do the show at the other time, the more the, more the night time here in Japan. I know that show is better uh, for people in Europe, for example, uh, and probably better for those of you in South America and Brazil too, a little more early instead of late, late night. Really enjoyed connecting with you again. As always, join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. you got to commit. Don't quit. You know that. So go over to the website. You can learn more about my VIP program. You can try it for just $1. Just try it for 10 days for $1. And after that, if you stay a member, of course, commit and don't quit. That's at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. EffortlessEnglishClub.com. I will be back again tomorrow. Lots of love to you. Bye for now.